Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the... We're about 40 miles south of Candlestick Point as we welcome you inside Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the New York Jets and the San Francisco 49ers. And with a new rule, that decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he only gets to the 20. carry for Matt Forte and not too much going there as he'll get it up to the 23 yard line two yards on the carry there it'll be second down and the big boys up front in the trenches what do you think of the O-line Charles I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive they know what the man next to them is going to do at all times and they operate as a terrific unit Wilson Marshall in motion left. All right, now look at 56. They stay on the ground. Forte again. That'll go as a loss of five. And that'll make it third and 13. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense. They were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front? creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. Ellington now to return it. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And the Niners set up well. They take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. Hyde. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. And Carlos Hyde's such a physical, tough runner. People are talking about him changing his style. I don't think he should change a thing, and I know he wants to add catching the ball to his arsenal as well. One thing's for sure. He said in the offseason, he told us he's happy to be in a Chip Kelly offense, isn't he? No doubt about it. On second down, here's Kaepernick. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And here's the headshots for the offense. And Carlos Hyde, a talented back. Has taken over as the lead runner. A terrific talent. Can batter you inside, but has more speed than what you expect to take it the distance. From the gun on third down, Kaepernick. And able to find Curley. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. And Cap, of course, was a great baseball player, drafted as a pitcher. He kind of showed his arm right there, didn't he? Yeah, he let that one go, didn't he? That was, that was a catcher putting down the number one signal for the fastball <laughs> and turning it loose. It was needed in that situation, though. He had to throw a tight spiral and a hard one in order to get it in there for a completion. And the defense for New York. Leonard Williams was one of the top draft picks coming out of USC, and he's done nothing to diminish the comparisons people make of past greats. On second down, high, down to the 25. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. After watching that play and result, I go back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator, Brandon, before the game, and said, how are you going to move the ball running it against the number one defense? He gave us no indication. Didn't tip his hand at all, so we have to see how this unfolds as this game moves along. And caught by Curley. And he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. 
because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Kaepernick to hide on the ground. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And as we've seen throughout this season, it's no picnic trying to score touchdowns against this unit. They're ranked number one against the run. But it's also difficult because it's not easy to throw the ball against them either. Again, it's high. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Well, that was better than the first go around when he lost yardage, but still nothing there, and that sets up a third and long. Tough spot here. Put it mildly, sometimes I wonder if some of that old school football should come back into play. You know what I would think here? Quick kick. Try and change field position, help out your team. And Salek here, left side. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get this. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the 49ers in control of the football. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. And Dawson's kick is good. And the 49ers take a 3-0 lead. So after slogging through a scoreless first quarter, we have action on the scoreboard. A field goal makes it 3-0. Well, with these two offenses, we weren't going to stay 0-0 forever, were we? I'm not sure that this opens the floodgates, but I doubt that's the last scoring we're going to see. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of the game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Forte, the lone running back. And he'll get it up the middle. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Petty now. That one complete to Anderson. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Good use of the pass there to pick up the first down against a defensive look that they had specifically prepared for, they told us, coming into this one. Certainly seems like they're holding all the right cards now, doesn't it? Because of their preparation. Went back, watched the tape, studied the tendencies, and they feel like they had them down cold, and they were able to use the pass against them. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Here's Patty. Drops it underneath to Forte. Patty's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Back to throw. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. 
We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back with more after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have highlights and analysis of this first half. I'm guessing mostly defensive highlights that we will see. Yeah, that's kind of cool. No touchdown scored yet so far. Yeah, none whatsoever. They go play action here on first down. Going for it all. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked by the rookie Rashad Robinson. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And now the 49er offense ready to go and getting back out onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. yardage here. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. And there's your standard issue draw play. I like it a lot better when it's actually been set up. On second down, here's Kaepernick. Out to the flat for Hyde. Seven yards on the play, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Kaepernick looking to throw, third and two. On the left side, it's McDonald. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Carlos Hyde was the target. That'll bring up second down. And on second and ten now. Back to the air on second down. It's Kaepernick. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Marcus Williams. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. And New York set to take the field. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. <laughs>23-yard line. A big gain there after going backwards, and that'll lead to a third down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. They'll try and get it with Forte. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. When we sat with the coaching staff a couple of days ago, they said attacking that defensive look with a run, something they wanted to do, it was effective. And they were extremely confident, weren't they? Their planning, their preparation, they knew what they were going to get in that defense, and they were able to attack it accordingly. And quickly, they get to the line. On second down, Forte. 
And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. Here's Patty. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And Folk's kick is good. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. And that three-point tally now means we are even here toward the end of the second quarter. And what a way to end the half. Put some points on the board, feel better about yourselves as a team, and you're right back to even. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So as they take it over, we step aside. A final shot before half for Kaepernick. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. So we've reached halftime in a low score. And pump the brakes, Larry. Pump the brakes. We are ready for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that will give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And that's a good sign right there as we start the third quarter. Because in the first half, not much space to run the football. And as we go into the half, we often think to ourselves, all right, what's the adjustment? What do they have to do? You know what a lot of the adjustments are? No adjustments. You know the game plan. I've been working on it all week. Maybe a little tweak here or there, a little bit better blocking. And now you're establishing the running game. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Now a run with high. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. They'll run the option left, and he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. the fumble there for the Niners last year in 2015 fewest in the league lost only five of them and had a record that would suggest that they had a bunch of them right so it's really counterintuitive when you think about it they only had five fumbles and really had the struggles they had during that season they'll come out 
in the pistol. They'll try to get the running game going with Forte. A gain of three, second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. See if they stay on the ground for second down. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. They come up with an offset eye. Again, they run. Again, it's Forte. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave them with a third and about five. And the evidence shows last week's game, it's really leaked into a second game now, Charles. What do you think of this? And it's a surprise, isn't it? Because when we spent time watching them practice, talking with the coaches, they felt like a bounce back was going to happen this week. They were very confident in the game plan, thought the defenses they would see would present great opportunities for big time runs. We're not getting that so far. I don't know if this is a game plan, or if they're just being overwhelmed by the defense they're facing. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Brandon, just mark that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball, just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yardage. And no move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. Time running out here on the play clock. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And he's got a new one. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. We always hear about guys wanting to make plays that quiet a crowd. Shh. Yeah. After that one. Here in the third quarter, they were hoping to get the stop, get the football back. Not the case. What a completion on a fourth down play. On first down, this is Forte. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and they're going to have a third down. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. Defense taking pass. They've got the nickel set out on third and six. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Back now here in Santa Clara. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to break our fourth quarter tie. And folks, kick is good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. So we still wait on the first touchdown of the game, but his second field goal makes this now a 6-3 score. And this would be the definition of winning ugly. Now you need to continue to ride your defense and hope that you can make this fourth quarter lead stand up. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. We focus our attention now on the Jets' defense. Coming off a fumble recovery there on the last time they were out on the field, so we'll see what they do here. And once that happens, everybody wants to get involved. All right, whoever created the last one, they're going to get the praise in the club session. You want that praise yourself so you know everyone's going to be attacking the football. Well, we'll see if they can attack it, get hungry, and get another turnover. But pretty good coverage there, and both of these defenses, they've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it, and in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides, where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? To throw is Kaepernick, and he comes back with one complete.
And that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It'll be a loss of one. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. some open field. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And now out come the Jets. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. Again. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try and increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. The pitch comes to Forte. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge? Whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football. If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a game. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. A running play now for Forte. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. There are so many times during camp and practice that you get bored as a player doing regular drills. But how about that shed and skate drill right there by the linebacker? You do it each and every day, get the blocker away, and get into the backfield and make a big-time tackle. That's what we just saw. NFL teams last year, a little under 50% on fourth down conversions. This is a bit tougher. Fourth and four. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. He'll drop nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The Jets try it, but the fourth down play doesn't work. In there to sack him for a loss of six. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. They come up on a first and goal with this game still hanging in the balance. To throw, Kaepernick. His pass caught at the four. That throw good for four. It's second down. They're going to hurry back to the line now. He'll look to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Jeremy Curley, the intended receiver. And it's third and four. An extra defensive back in the game here on third and goal. to throw and incomplete he had nowhere to throw so he just tossed it away but that brings up fourth partner how many times have you heard it pressure creates diamonds right <laughs> but it also bursts pipes and on that one that's what they got they got after him and he was fortunate just to get rid of it yeah he just had to chuck it away 
And Dawson's kick is good. And we are all tied here in the final stages. So now then, it's a big kick there to get this game back to even. Now the worry is, did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal could still do you in. Brandon, we're going to see right here. I would expect that after the kickoff, this offense is going to come out throwing. So those first few plays are going to be the key. The New York set to take the field. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened. You think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Now. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. Give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. Tie game, fourth quarter, and they're going for this thing on fourth down. Here's Patty. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And no, it's incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Niners take over in terrific field position. And San Francisco gets set to go here. They are in field goal range here already. How do you handle this situation, tie game? In a perfect scenario, you got to find a way to get the ball to the proper spot for your field goal kicker. They always have preferences. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. They run it again with Hyde. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They'll run high, and that's a touchdown as they've broken our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. Well, any thoughts about overtime have ended at this juncture. That touchdown puts them up six. I would imagine they'll kick the extra point now and rely on their defense. Yeah, rely on their defense. So a little bit of time left on the clock here in the fourth, but they got to feel good now. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And it's up and good to extend the lead to 13-6. After the touchdown, it's Dawson on to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. Critical condition here, obviously. Got to hope to get something quick right and then maybe take that shot deep. And once they do take the big shot, you've got to worry on defense. Of course, no one getting behind the defense and making an easy throw. But nowadays, it's not just the ball being tipped in the air and people in the end zone in a cluster. It's that guy that's short in the end zone who comes up and ends up making the play because he goes on. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. One receiver left, three to the right. Back 
to throw. Dance into his left. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Holding defense. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some.